Hey, what is up, guys? This is Zach Clausen, and I'm here to do a commentary on the Strongman competition that I did yesterday. There were five events, and this is the first event. It's the seated truck pull, or the arm over arm truck pull, and uh, the whole idea is to pull the truck towards you, and it's 50 feet. Now, in this competition, they backed the truck up uh, so that it, it was downhill, so we had to pull it uphill. So, I mean, the whole idea is that you're supposed to get momentum and get the wheels rolling. That's kind of the whole strategy. But not one competitor was able to get this thing moving because of where it was placed. Now, it was raining. You can see the ground's kind of wet. The rope was soaking wet. Like, I, even with all my grip strength, I couldn't even hold the freaking rope. My hands were just sliding down. Now, I've pulled a, a bigger truck than this before, so I was really surprised when I could not get that thing to budge. I placed seventh. Uh, I don't, I'm not really sure how I did better or worse than anyone, but first place moved it 11 inches, just to kind of put it into perspective, that uh, there was no way that we were getting leverage, it was just kind of, it's just a bad placement for the truck overall. So it wasn't exactly a very good way to start off a strongman competition because no one was able to complete the first event, so you know, not, not a whole lot of confidence going into the rest of the competition. I'm not sure why they didn't, you know, move the truck after the first couple competitors weren't able to pull it and then you know give them a chance to go again after everybody else is gone but I guess they just decided to leave it where it was and so yeah nobody completed the first event and you know it's a very taxing event too like you gotta use all your grip strength use your full body it, it almost completely destroys your grip for the rest of the day you know you have to go into every other event picking up heavy things and your grip is shot from the rope so honestly, it kind of felt like a little bit of a waste of energy. i had been training for this truck pull pretty hard, like I've been doing a lot of seated rows and stuff like that to get ready, and none of that really seemed to matter, just, you know, just because we were pulling the freaking three-ton truck uphill. So that was that event. The second event was a press medley, so you have to press five odd objects. The first sandbag that I'm lifting here is 150 pounds, and uh, that one went up pretty easy. I'd been training with a sandbag that was around 100 pounds, so I didn't really have much trouble with that. The keg was very difficult. The keg was 180 pounds, and I've only been practicing with a keg like that weighs 100 pounds. So, you know, if I'd made this keg press, it would have been an 80 pound PR. You know, I was not really ready. I have the technique here, but I was just, I just could not get the thing over my head. So I tried and I tried, but I wasn't able to do it. The next thing was the circus dumbbell, that's to the left of me there, that was 140 pounds. Now originally, uh, what they posted in the competition was that the dumbbell was going to be the first thing, and then you would move on to the sandbag and the keg. So because I knew that was going to be the first press, I doubled down on my overhead pressing for a one-arm dumbbell. So I've been, you know, doing that like three times a week, I've been training so hard for that dumbbell. You know, it was it was a priority right beside the deadlift in my training. I seriously prioritized it that hard. And then they changed the order, which is good because I was nervous for the dumbbell. I wasn't sure if I was going to get it. But kind of ironic that I trained so hard for that dumbbell. And then I didn't even end up getting to the dumbbell. So I don't know. I may have restructured my training had I known it was going to be third. Because then I may have doubled down on two-handed overhead pressing, you know, so, so, yeah, something with the keg, something to improve my, my keg pressing or something like that, you know, but uh, yeah, just kind of ironic, but uh, I was only able to complete the first press, but you know, it's not that bad, I didn't zero the event, I was able to do some of it, and which is definitely better than nothing, and just like the last competition, if you guys know me by now, you know that my overhead press strength is one of my weaker uh, realms of strongman you know everybody kind of has their their bests and their and their worsts and what they're really strong at and overhead pressing is just one of those things just I'm not very good at it so I was kind of glad to get it out of the way and that I didn't zero it so you know I'm not all that disappointed with uh, how I did here the third event was the car deadlift now I had trained pretty hard for this deadlift I've been doing a lot of deadlifts uh, between you know the hex bar and the barbell I switched to more of a hex bar deadlift when I was preparing for this to get get a feel for deadlifting with the handles at my sides. So you can see in the video here that I'm getting that car up actually not too bad. I was kind of worried because, you know, how do you, you can prepare and train in the gym, but you don't know how much a car weighs, right? And they didn't even know how much the car weighed. Like I figured it between four and 500 pounds, but everyone there said it was more 
in the 500 pound range. So, you know, I'm just assuming this is a roughly 500 pound deadlift. And I was able to get this for nine reps. Uh, my form was kind of out the window. I was just trying to get the weight up. But I mean, that's kind of why we train safely in the gym. We train with good form, with a neutral spine, so that we can go and, and test our strength one day. And you know, we're not going to get hurt, right? Because our bodies are, are trained and we're ready for it. So when you see people testing their best or at a strongman competition and you think, oh man, where's the neutral spine? We train so that we can be safe when our spine isn't neutral. And looking back on this, the slope of the handle in the car going away from me was kind of downwards, but I was pressing it straight up. So what I, what I saw a lot of other competitors doing that had maybe done a car deadlift before is they were pressing kind of towards the car. So they were standing straight up, but kind of leaning back a little bit. That may have been useful for leverage. I didn't really uh, know that. So I was kind of pressing it just straight upwards as if I would with a hex bar or a barbell. So it may have helped me and taken a little bit of the stress off my shoulders because I almost had to shrug it up to get it into the right position. And you know, I, I would start strong on my legs, but then the back would take over and then the shoulders and you can see there's all these different things coming together to get the car up. Not necessarily the best form, but I, I was still deadlifting it. All I'm trying to say is that I think it probably would have been a better, more efficient way of doing it, but I'm pretty happy with how this one went. You know, I've never deadlifted a car and I was able to get nine reps at roughly 500 pounds and I ended up with a decent placement of uh, fifth place. So I'm definitely pleased with how this event went. The fourth event and by far my best event was the farmer's walk. So it was 250 pounds a hand and you had to take it 160 feet. That is right, you heard me, 160 feet. So originally, uh, what was on posted for what the competition was gonna be, it was 50 feet. So 50 feet would have been right about there, you know, where I'm running. And then they added another 30 feet to finish the one way, which is pretty crazy to add 30 feet to an already 50 foot walk. But then they said you had to go around those tires and bring it back. And all the competitors jaws just dropped because it, that is that is an insane distance to do farmer's walks. Like it's, it's insane to the point where it just, it seems unrealistic. Like uh, professional strongman competitions, you know, like world's strongest man, like they only go like 40 feet. So for what reason we had to go 160 feet? I don't really know. You know, nobody was training for 160 feet. You can see here, like I'm tapped out, I'm tapped out. Like I've had to pick that thing up like four times to get around that tire. And it's not as simple as just like, like the, the hard part, you know, is picking it up and holding it. And at that point I've picked up those, those handles, 500 pounds like five times. This is after the deadlifts. So I was pretty tapped out of energy. I'm just trying to get every single inch, you know, like every inch counts when you're competing against other people. But overall, like I'm pretty pumped with how well I did. The, the first three people before me weren't even able to pick the weight up off the ground. So I was kind of nervous, but then I was the first competitor to actually take that thing off, like 80 feet. So I was pretty happy with myself and I ended up placing third which isn't bad at all. It was uh, by far my best event. And the final event was the load event. So we had to load five odd objects. The first stone I'm carrying there, it's an Atlas stone, and it was 170 pounds. The second stone was a field stone, and it was 185 pounds. Now I find the, the field stones are a lot easier to grab because they have a lot of edges. You can kind of get your grip on something, but these round Atlas stones are so tough. And we weren't allowed to use tacky either, so this is just pure grip strength. Now, I really struggled with this stone. This one was 215 pounds, and my strength was there. I just could not get a grip, and I crushed my fingers like twice while I was trying to do this. You see me shaking my hand out there a couple times. You know, I'm surprised I didn't lose a nail because uh, that stone kept rolling over my fingers. And, uh, you know, if I would gotten this one, I think I could have got the 235 field stone. I think the 235 field stone probably would have been easier than the, the 215 atlas stone. So yeah, I'm trying and trying here and, and I ended up running out of time. But I think that if I had had more time, you know, another 30 seconds even just to figure out where to put my hands or to figure out the leverage, I feel like I was like cracking a code and I almost had it cracked and then I ran out of time. 
which is sometimes the case. You know, you pick up something new for the first time. You feel like you need a, a second to figure it out unless, you know, you're just brutally strong and, and it's just a light weight for you. Then the grip all of a sudden becomes easy, right? Because uh, there were a couple competitors that were able to just rip that stone up like it was nothing. So strength definitely plays a part in that in how much grip strength you need at the end of the day. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I got two out of five lifts. So, you know, it was a very heavy comp. So I'm pretty happy that I was able to get two out of five. I definitely think I could have gotten three out of five. But, uh, you know, that's just the nature of competitions and, you know, not knowing what the weight is going to feel like the day of, right? So I ended up placing sixth overall, which actually isn't too bad. I was kind of just hoping to, like, you know, second last or last is fine as long as I didn't zero any events. So I, I did better than I thought I was going to do. Um, one thing that is noteworthy, there was supposed to be a lightweight men's and a heavyweight men's. Now, not enough heavyweight people signed up. So they ended up just throwing the heavyweight men into the lightweight. So me actually worrying about making my way in uh, ended up being a bit of a waste because they didn't even end up weighing on us. So the, the heavyweight men were with the lightweight men. But the heavyweight competitors just did the lightweight numbers. So they were ready for heavier weights competing at a higher level. And then they ended up getting to compete with like the lightweight men's weight. So I don't know how that would affect my placement. It, you know, if I was just competing with other lightweight men, maybe I would have fared better in the final standings because I was competing with people that were uh, heavyweight competitors, right? So it ended up just being an open division. So there was no lightweight and heavyweight at the end. But, you know, which I find odd because for the women, they did have a heavyweight and lightweight, but there was only two people in the lightweight category. So it seems like, hmm, you know, that <laughs> they probably just should have thrown the lightweight in with the heavyweight, but... That wouldn't be fair for the lightweighters so uh, i'm not really sure why they just had a category of two people for women's lightweight both of them made both of them made places at the end you know first place and second place when there's no one else but uh yeah i'm not sure so overall like i like i mentioned before i'm pretty happy with how the comp went it could have gone a lot worse and i ended up doing you know, like mediocre, which like average, which I'm, I'm cool with. This is my first year in Strongman, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with the strength gains I was able to reap over this past, over the past few months, and uh, it was a really enjoyable experience. And another cool thing about this competition is that Mark Henry was there. That was pretty freaking cool, man. That guy was, uh, he was the world's strongest man in 2002, and he, he, won, I think he won the first. Arnold Classics, and he, he's a holder of a bunch of different other Olympic weightlifting records. You know, he was an Olympic weightlifting athlete. He's he's done it all. You know, he's got a lot under his belt. He's he's a very credible strongman and, and in general weightlifting athlete. He was in the WWE as well, if that's something that, you know, some people are interested in. But uh, he's definitely a, a decorated athlete. And it was super cool to see him there. I got to meet him, shake his hand, and, you know, chat briefly and it's super cool that he was just there and he's taking pictures with the athletes and he's just all around a, a super stand-up guy but anyways guys thanks for listening and thanks for watching i hope that this video sheds a bit of light as to why i was able to do some things and not able to do other things i think that the competition was run pretty well it was pretty it felt pretty professional um there were some you know some decisions that were made like the the truck placement and adding an extremely unnecessary amount of distance to the farmer's walk that I found questionable. But overall, I think that the competition was well run. I enjoyed it. All the other athletes were kind and competitive, and it was just a, a fun environment to be in. And the cool thing about Strongman is just that, you know, everybody cheers each other on. We're all competing against each other, but then we all cheer for each other when uh, it becomes their turn to compete. So more pictures and videos coming soon. They had a professional photographer and videographer there, and I think that they're making a, some sweet video montage, so I might upload some of that onto my channel with their permission. So yeah, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Klaus next out.